Hello, F Society IRC chat. This is your moderator, Hiroja Shai. And I'm here to review the season three premiere of Mr. Robot, which is Power Saver Mode. Oh, so many thoughts about this episode. Um, you may have caught that on my Facebook live reaction right after the um, episode ended, which was a little late because I didn't know that it was going to go five minutes over. But you can catch it on the uh, Facebook group as well as the Facebook page of uh, F Society RC, uh, Mr. Robot Group. But uh, yeah, uh, let's get into this. So first off, um, I'm going to kind of go scene by scene with this particular episode and then I'm going to give some of my thoughts along the way and then just overall wrap up and end with my just my thoughts about where the season may be going and what I think was being um, shown or stated in this particular episode. So first off, um, they do a recap, kind of catch everybody up, and we catch up with our intrepid hero, if you will, whom I don't believe to be a hero, and I might do another episode on the fact that F Society is not the good guys in this. Uh, Elliot does an actually a fantastic speech does this every season I don't know if there's gonna be another speech but he does have a big speech where he talks to his friends about his state of mind the first season it was about F you know F society uh, when he was in the therapy room on uh, the season premiere of that or the start of the show really with Krista uh, the second season was the God speech um, and the third one um, for this season I guess you can say is Elliot acknowledging um, what he has done has in, in essence wrecked the world rather than trying to save the world. But before we get into that particular speech, um, we wake up and Elliot um, is with, oh wait, that's not how it starts. It starts with Irvin. Irvin is, I guess you can say, a fixer for the um, Dark Army. He's trying to order some barbecue um, at the Red Wheelbarrow, and he's not having the best time of it because of the rules. So the rules of trying to get another milkshake and talking about principles. And he gets a phone call from what we now know and can kind of hint at is Tyra Wellick explaining how he shot Elliot. So Urban um, goes to the place. I guess the, the Red Wheelbarrow restaurant is the one that's close to the little hideout there that's overlooking the uh, location of stage two. So he was already in the area. And um, he comes in and he's very matter of fact, very charming. Um, he's played by, oh crap, uh, Bobby Carvel. Um, you may have seen him in a bunch of different uh, shows over the years. He's a very big television guy. He's done some movies as well. Um, I've always liked him as an actor and I was very excited by the fact that he was coming on to the show and he's just such a character. Uh, he has such pathos to him and you pretty much enjoy mm, all of the characters that he plays, even the ones that are kind of bad or a little douchey. Uh, but this, this character, you know, very matter of fact, very direct, uh, he takes a picture of Elliot, comes Tyrell Wellick. Um, all the while, I guess you could say he might be having a conversation with his boss. And uh, we now know his boss to be, uh, or at least there might be an intermarry, but it looks like he was directly talking to White Rose. And he wanted to know what, what was being done. Elliot was being patched up. He wanted to know what's to be done with the Swede. Um, kind of doesn't like Elliot or the Swede because they're kind of a little bit crazy. Um, but um, he kind of goes with it. And from there, we see where White Rose is, and she is at the Washington Township plant, um, at least in her form as the minister, the Chinese security minister, and she's with her little attache or assistant, and it's very sad to say that it looks like the Washington Township plant is not the ultimate MacGuffin. I didn't expect or anticipate that they would reveal the Washington Township plant at all. Um, I thought it was going to be the, the Maltese Falcon, something that was being passed around, or the briefcase in um, Pulp Fiction, where you never really know what the contents are. 
but it's something that everyone desires and wants or has wants a look see if you will um, it looks like it uh, I'm not really sure exactly what the Washington Township plan is I did read some reddit posts I did tempt myself um, let's see um, I'll do say this I mean they did have as we were going through the the nuclear power plant they had did have some workers talking about you know parallel universes and many copies to yourself so they're alluding to that that's a theory that's been around um, almost the beginning of the show how there might be parallel universes or time travel didn't anticipate the show was going to lean to that direction I thought it'd be more grounded in reality um, I also thought maybe the Washington Township plant might be a cobalt uh, fusion maker where you can make it for bombs or possibly uh, another energy source that's something that you can do with cobalt um, it's a technique of salt nuclear salting is how you is derived and it's um, very technical very dangerous I guess you can say but once um, done correctly the energy the efficiency of the energy is uh, much greater than our current usage of nuclear power but anyways um, it's from there we learn from White Rose that Elliot's father worked on this particular project he wasn't just a worker within um, the plant in itself uh, he helped design whatever it is th this machine that White Rose is willing to pay two trillion dollars to E Corp to have sole access of or at least still have and maintain control of this project and it was also revealed that Elliot came to them to Dark Army with his passion to destroy E Corp which happened to align with White Rose's uh, agenda it might be something that she had been planning for quite some time and Elliot pro provided an opportunity to actually enact the plan to destroy E Corp and he also hinted the fact that Elliot could actually die at some point in time he's not that vital to the overall structure of White Rose's plan if you will uh, but stage two is gonna go on um, Elliot does try to stop stage two and we'll get to that but it seems the plan is to destroy all the paper and records and things of that nature um, that is the goal of this season I should note that each season seems to hint kind of like the conventional uh, storytelling structure that's very much subverted by Sam Esmail and the writers of the show um, you know the first season was more like a mystery um, I wouldn't say like a crime caper mystery, but uh, a who or even a who done it, but uh, what is it type of mystery? Um, like who is you know Mr. Robot? What is F Society? Why uh, Evil Corp? And that type of mystery structure for the first season was answered. The second season was kind of like the getaway. You know, can you get away with what was done? Um, and the aftermath of the getaway. You know the ramifications of that and we're seeing more of that this season in the background you're seeing a lot of closed businesses there's garbage everywhere it looks like the like the 70s if you ever seen old uh, New York movies of the 70s like actually filmed at the time uh, there's like even though they try to clean it up and sometimes they kept it because it's part of the character structure of the city of New York or the story there's like garbage everywhere the city looks really dirty very dingy unsafe well New York at the time in the 70s almost all the way to them I would say the mid 80s was a very unsafe city um, very much in decay um, very much hit by the economic doldrums of the 70s and to some extent even to the 80s it took a very long while for it to recover it really wasn't until the 90s that it really did fully recover and they did the whole D Disney Disney fine of the you know Times Square in the city itself and it's still going through a cleanup if you will like the scrubbing away of New York or the gentrification of the city um, it seems like I don't know understand the thinking or the cultural thinking or blaming the the distinctive attributes to make New York New York were the reasons why it was in the economic doldrums and having the rise in crime and so it seems like they're trying to businessify or um, whitewash or erase the prominent distinctive uh, different cultural groups within the city of New York the di distinctiveness of all the different boroughs 
um, and make it all cookie cutter and the same. But anyways, that's not the case here. The case here is you're seeing the decay of the city, yet at the same time you're seeing stuff like the grand opening of Red Wheelbarrow. So you're, you're seeing where there is a lot of people at the bottom, yet there's still some people that are able to make it, even if it's barely, or they're not really affected by the, um, the hack, the cash um, restrictions. Uh, you see a lot of prominence of eCoin, which is uh, Philip Price's plan, who was not in this episode. Philip Price wasn't in this episode. Dom wasn't in this episode. Who else? Oh, Trenton and Moby and Leon weren't in this episode. Those characters weren't here. Um, I'm imagining they'll be in the second or third episode. They'll, they'll pop up. Um, we know they're, they're still alive. Um... But they weren't in the season premiere, which I felt was a little strange. But hopefully some questions, particularly with Trenton and Moby. Considering now that Elliot is on the mission to... Uh, I realize I'm jumping around a little bit here. Uh, is on the mission to undo the hack. That maybe Trenton and Moby might play a part in that. I'm not positive, not sure. But he might be getting the gang back together, if you will. Um, but he also doesn't know Trenton and Moby are still alive. Um, anyways, what was my thought? Okay, so, so you see eCoin in the background. You also see Bitcoin, <laughs> which has um, gone up significant value here in the 2017. They're still in 2015, my understanding of the time structure. We only did a six-day jump. And I have no problem with these time jumps. It, it adds urgency to the story. It has uh, anxiety and tension because you have no idea what was going on, was going on really, in those six days. We do know from Angela, whom um, Elliot woke up to, he was in her apartment, and he comes to the revelation that she's aware of everything about F Society and Dark Army. He's very upset by it because he wants to protect her, kind of still, but she's a full-on participant, um, whether he realizes it or not. Any, he... I don't know how much. Elliot realizes the control Mr. Robot has or the actions of Mr. Robot really inside his head because he is Mr. Robot. It is his personality. Um, I've always spoken about, and people have talked about it, I talked about it in one of my theory episodes of, you know, the three faces of Elliot. How there's the Elliot that we know, the one that with the damaged memory and doesn't remember that Darlene's his sister. The Elliot that's able to focus solely on the mission at hand, which is destruction of Evil Corp. Then there's the Mr. Robot personality. And then there's the real Elliot. The real Elliot that we saw a hint of in season two when he and Darlene um, had met up around Halloween. And he was the one that was coming things together. I think people thought maybe that's where Mr. Robot first appeared. I'm thinking now, given what we've seen, what Mr. Robot is doing, that that might actually have been the real Elliot. The real Elliot that is both Mr. Robot and this Elliot that we see but he had to split himself because he he was I guess you could say indecisive or he needed to really f focus on these different agendas I don't know it was it's just a theory that's been bantering around that there's a, a third personality some people thought it was Tyrell Wellick might be the third personality but there's a third personality within um, Elliot something is his friends us the audience um, who, who knows um, what did I want to talk about? So Angela's hip to the game. She knows what's going on. Elliot is in her apartment. He he wants to get the hell out of there. He's trying to stop stage two. That's what he tried to do before he got shot by Ty Tyrell Wellick. He wants to get back at it. Uh, Angela tells him that, you know, the, the power's been out for six days. We saw that brown out at the end of season two, so it's kind of carried on. Um, what I found disturbing about this um, as the episode progressed was I remember stories of blackouts happening in New York. The most infamous or famous one was the um, 1977 blackout, um, which I believe took place during a World Series. Um, at the same time, there was the Son and Sam killings. And it wasn't Spike Jones, it was Spike Lee that did the movie. I think it was actually called The Son of Sam. Um, it had Adrian Brody in it. Um, it talked about that summer and that blackout. Um, it's very, 
uh, famous in the hip hop world and in the music world in general in New York. A lot of hip hop artists, rap artists, um, musicians, punk rock, a lot of punk rockers, um, anarchists, people that would end up, um, people that had, um, you know, developed the music industry. Other, other types of businesses actually grew out of that period. Um, some of the small businesses like designers and things of that nature were heavily influenced by their experience during that blackout, uh, the violence, the chaos that occurred. Um, there was riots. Uh, the police had to come in. It, it, it got really, really ugly. You don't see that in the streets for six days of blackouts with millions of people in New York. Um, you don't even see a police presence really, not even in the background so much. You see people walking around and garbage piled up. You just see some kind of hints of scuffling in the background. One of them is the imaginings of Elliot and the other you, you kind of have to really watch and see the reactions of people and the, the anger anger and visceral um, day to day activities if you will. Particularly when Darlene and Elliot were walking to the hacker space. But the city's not on fire. You're not seeing any National Guard. I don't know if they're in the center of the city and we're just on the outskirts. Um, and they just basically abandon the outskirts to themselves. You're not seeing people with bats in their hands, pipes, guns. That happened during the uh, 77 riots where people weaponized themselves, if you will, to protect their property, to protect uh, what they had, their home and stuff like that. Walking around in uh, groups and gangs, if you will. Um, to protect themselves and, and clashing with people. I mean, you're not seeing that. It's a, like almost a very pacification, a very passive uh, experience of blackouts, if you will. I found that very disturbing and very strange, and it kind of feeds into Elliot's um, speech. Um, I'll touch on it. I think I want to separate that speech because I think that's really the real overall theme. I realize that Sam Ismail... Um, He's really talking about the current state of affairs that is happening here. Like all of Mr. Robot is a reflection of not only the current um, recent past and the future of state of affairs of just the globe, of the world in general, and politics. That's the whole purpose and rhyme and reason of this show is an allegory of some of the things that are going on. They talk about these topics and subjects and they have a lot of depth and pathos to it. Um, but yeah, it was just very, it was very strange for me. It didn't seem very New York-ish. And maybe that will be expressed throughout the season because I know Sam Esmail is a New Yorker. I know a lot of the production crew are from New York, um, the writers and stuff like that. Um, you know, actors and stuff like that, like Joey Badass and things of that nature. I think Bobby Carvel is also from New York. Um, yeah, yeah, so it was very strange. And I don't know, maybe there will be an examination of the gentrification of New York, how it pacified the, the oomph, if you will, that people, the stereotype that people think of New York, the aggressiveness, if you will. You know, it takes a little, it takes a certain type of personality to be able to survive in a city like New York. Uh, you know, this, the expression, you know, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere from Sinatra. But yeah, I found that very strange, very weird. Um, Elliot, you know, leaves the apartment from Angela. She knows about Tyra Wellock. She knows about F Society. He's a little perturbed by all this. He's he leaving the apartment. He gets some clothes and he goes back to his apartment. Um, he has to walk through the city, and that's when you see some of the hints and the. I was just talking about like the trash and all that. Um, runs into his landlord. He finds out there's someone in his apartment. Turns out it's Darlene. It's very interesting that there was um a police thing still on his apartment and his landlord was pretty friendly with him. Um, I've heard all sorts of crazy stories about landlords and how they're very not your friend type of a deal. But this guy seems to be really friendly with Elliot. Don't know what that is about. Um, likes him as a tenant. Tells him maybe his visitor can rent an apartment there. That kind of a deal. Kind of a salesmanship deal. Not really sure. I would think that the uh, I also know that New York has a lot of protections for renters when it comes to um, apartments and properties and stuff like that. You know, I would think, you know, having a police presence and police tape that he probably wouldn't want Elliot as a tenant, even in these, you know, dark times, if you will. But, um, you know, Darlene's there. Turns out, Darlene um, is working with the FBI. 
Um, I thought initially maybe she's just bait. They let her go and wanted to follow her around and see where she would go. I think Darlie's a little too smart for something like that, but no, she's working directly for the FBI. I don't know if she's wearing a wire, what their contact is. I do know that they're following her around. We know this from uh, when Elliot and Darlene met, meet up with the Dark Army at the hackerspace and get into um, Irvin's car and invade the FBI. Um, she was aware of FBI presence and was looking at the car. Angela eventually tells Elliot uh, when he comes back to her apartment um, after his long deep think about what he's going to do that he uh, well he doesn't learn from Dar Angela. Mr. Robot learns that Darlene can't be trusted. Um, I know Dark Army has inside people within the FBI. It might be because of the blackout. They don't have the information because it's not being uploaded onto the internet. Even though governments have do have redundancies. It might be that Dom is being very smart. And I know some cases they do do things like going straight paper. Like really old school and nothing's on any kind of electronic devices. Um, everything's paper handled. So you would have to literally, there's like maybe only one copy of something. Um, maybe two, like something for archive purposes and one that's passed around um it might be that they might be using that method and that's why it's not known that darlene has flipped yet but the dark army obviously suspects it's concerning that they tried to kill her and cisco um in the diner i, I do believe both of them were the target um the fact that she is, has been released from custody is very unusual considering the level of violence and her association with Cisco, and the fact that she's already being suspected and investigated by the FBI for them not to detain her longer in 72 hours or put some kind of charge on her, whether credit card fraud or some, you know, stealing of a gun or something like that to hold her and detain her any further. It's obvious that she's being very cooperative. Um, you know, and Elliot's, you know, because he, he has a hard understanding of emotions and people. Uh, he's very abrupt with Darlene. Um, she tells him the Cisco's died, and he's like, <laughs> she has the emotional pathos. All he's concerned about is like what she told told the FBI. She calls him on his bullshit, you know. Um, tries to get him focused. She wants to know what the hell stage two is. She knows about stage two. She says it's because of the bug phone. Um, knows about Tyrell Wellick. Um, wants to know what the hell is going on, how long has Tyrell worked on this, what does he know. Elliot lies to Darlene and says he's not part of this at all. I think she knows it's a lie, but she doesn't know why Elliot's lying to her. Um, he tries to get on so he can close the back door. He explains to Darlene, like, when she planted the Femta cell, that's how he was able to create a Black Lord in E Corp. It had two pronged purpose to own the FBI as well as to own E Corp at the same time. So, because the power is out and he can't connect to the internet, they have to go to this hacker space, and that's when they start walking through town. Um, they're, you know, they're walking through town. She knows how to, to get to the place, you know. It's clearly obvious between the two of them, you know, Elliot is like the technical hacker, code, all that, and Darlene is a social hacker. She knows how to socialize and hack into people. Um, she's a social engineering artist, so it's obvious that she would be plugged into the hacker space and have friends and know people and know things and, and realize when things are going wrong and when people are lying to her and being invasive and try to think in a broader scope of people's motivations and actions. Um, they get into the hacker space, there's a hacker game coming, going on called Capture the Flag. It's something that hackers do all the time. DEF CON is one of the biggest Capture the Flag spa events or spaces. There's events happening um, throughout the world around um, all year round um, at different points in time. Um, they're trying to get on but this is happening at, this, at, the, at the time that they need to, they want to get on. Um, so Elliot, you know, convinces a, a group of guys that he can solve the solution and solve the problem for them. So um, to basically win the game, if you will, so that he can get on and hack. And he does that. He, he does win the game. And as it was go that was going on, 
Darlene's aware the Dark Army has shown up and that they've been followed, if you will. Um, Alec knows it too. He says not to worry about it. They only want him. They'll leave her alone. She doesn't really buy it. She's very panicky. She starts having one of her attacks, and we realize that that's something that she has. It's been very hinted at. We've seen it. Elliot's aware of her attacks. She goes to a separate space, a uh, restroom, if you will, to have her attack, um, and she calls somebody. I'm assuming she calls Dom, and she basically says, the Dark Army is here. She couldn't do this. You need to get her out of here. It's not safe. There's a lot of cheering in the background. Um, the Dark Army, you know, knocks on the door. Or there's a bang on the door and, you know, Darlene's scared by it. Um, it's the Dark Army and they're taking her. Um, it turns out Elliot was successful in um, capturing the flag, if you will, or winning the game for everyone so he can get onto the space. Um, everyone's celebrating. Elliot's not. Um, let's see. It was interesting, the guy tried to, one of the guys that he was convinced, helped convince to get him, let him on the monitor of the computer, touches him and Elliot's like, you don't touch me, leave me alone, I got a photo, you know, basically he doesn't want to talk about what had just happened. Um, so Elliot is closing the back door, he, Darlene comes up, he knows she's there, he's telling her he's almost done, he's talking to us, explaining how he's doing it, about the back door, the website, all he has to do is find the server, own it basically, and put up a different, you know, password or code. Um, Darlene shows up and Dark Army's there. Dark Army actually pulls the monitor and um, pulls the both of them out of the hackerspace. And they're like, why are you here? What are you doing? He goes, I need to go for a walk. Um, basically, Dark Army is going to push him there and Darlene doesn't want to go with them. Um, she's look, probably looking towards the FBI for an exit, uh, but Elliot says I, he, he needs to do this, he needs to talk to them, he wants to talk to them. And he basically tells Irvin as they, they flee the FBI, and, they, and Irvin does a little social engineering and shuts down the FBI's um, car through OnStar is, um, as they go back to the red w wheelbarrow, is that he, he shut, he put the back door, stays shoes off. He basically doesn't want to do this anymore. Irvin says, you know, White Rose is like, um, well, she believes that uh, everyone's creation goes and goes and lives and dies by its creator. It was off, it's off, and he walks away. Elliot is like, I want confirmation from her. Uh, Irvin threatens him, saying that we took, you know, we took a bullet out of you, we can put it back in you. And he says, you know, basically go home. Darlene's there. She's not really part of the conversation. She's actually kind of being dismissed, if you will. I don't think Irvin wants her to be aware of what the conversation is about. Uh, she watches from afar, if you will, of what's going on. Um, she kind of gives, you know, with her attitude, lip back to Irvin because he keeps calling her Miss, and she says, "Don't call me Miss," and flips a finger as they have their conversation. Um, her and Elliot get into it. He goes, you know, we are we're alive. Um, they're letting us go. It's done. And Darlene doesn't believe it. She's like, yeah. She basically calls Elliot and says, if you want to believe that, if you want to put your head in the sand, that's fine. She's not gonna fucking believe it. He's saying, you know, and he throws the death of Cisco in her face. You know, if they wanted us dead, we would be dead like Cisco. We don't even know what happened to Triton and Moby. We're alive now. And she just. Pretty much freaks the fuck out and, and leaves him there. That's like the umpteenth time that he's pretty much um, belittled her, boxed her out, not being as close as I guess they once were. Um, but according to Angela, they were never really were that close. Uh, but Elliot's boxed her out. He's, you know, he's not telling her everything. He's not even telling her about Tyler Well. Um, he guess he's still trying to, I guess, protect her, being the big brother or whatever. So Darlene leaves, and then Elliot has his monologue. And he talks about, basically, in the essence, and I'll, I think I'm going to break down what the monologue is on a separate, you know, special edition episode of this, this podcast, but... Basically, he talks about how what he has done is not helpful. That he's actually emboldened in the power of the power structure, if you will, with more power and the ability to control everyone. 
Um, instead of freeing people, he's further enslaving them. Um, the grip on society, as he put it, is, you know, uh, the invisible hand has become a fist that's punching everyone in the dick. Um, his revolution has turned into oppression. Um, and he's, he's in his mind, if you will, and you see further decay, you see uh, how revolutions are being co-opted co by the corporation. There's a television show called Shift Control. There's uh, memorabilia everywhere. People are throwing signs. People are disappointed, disillusioned. There's fighting in the streets. There's more piles of garbage. Businesses, every single business he walks by in, the, in his head is closed. Um, he eventually walks up to the space where it's in memoriam of the missing and he sees the people that have died because of his actions. And that's when he comes to the conclusion that he needs to stop what he's doing completely. He needs to end stage two forever. There's no way the Dark Army or anyone, including himself, can um, bring this back to life because it's, it's not going to allow for things to happen. And this goes back to the, the conversation that um, Darlene and Elliot had about stage two, which she was wanted to know what it was about. And when he explained about the Phantom Cell and about how they had backdoor access and how what he was trying to do was get into the location for all their paper records of E Corp. And Darlene is looking at him in shock. So basically E Corp was not gonna be able to rebuild their data. And he's like, No. And she goes, You didn't want me along because you you're gonna blow up a bunch of people? You know, she she condemns him, really. Um and I don't know if she's condemning him because he wanted to kill a bunch of people by blowing up the building that housed the paper records, or the not including her, like she would not be down for the cause, if you will. So he, he makes his way back to Angela's apartment after fleeing much earlier um, in the night. And he has a conversation with Angela and he's like, um, I need a job with E Corp. Um, they probably need people to help recovery. I'm gonna end this. I'm gonna stop this. There's no more of what's going on. You don't have to worry about these things. And Angela's like, are you sure that's something you want to do? And he goes, yes. And he goes, I need you to help me um, monitor me and make sure that I don't turn into him. I need to know if that happens. And she's like, well, why do you want me to do that? And he goes, you're the only person who knows me. You know, and you know who the real, I, real person I am. And Angela agrees. He kisses her. I guess he mistook it for a romantic moment. Angela's like, you know, the kiss was a mistake. The kiss that they had last season. Um, she basically can't do this. Um, and Elliot's like, you know, yeah, this hurts. He's known her forever. But this is what Angela does. She doesn't love the people who really love her. She loves the people that don't. That's her safe mode, if you will. And there, I think there's some truth to that, but there's there's more to Angela that Elliot just doesn't realize because the Elliot that we're seeing does not see the complete picture of Angela. Um, Angela invites him to stay in the apartment so she can feel safe. You know, it is dark. Um, a lot of stuff is going on. He agrees. He's sleeping on the couch. And then Mr. Robot wakes up. And Angela can hear him in the apartment. And... She's, she's been waiting for him. She's been waiting for Mr. Robot. She's like, we got work to do. Elliot closed the back door. Mr. Robot's freaking out. He goes, how did he do that? Why is it possible? And Angela's like, look, it's not anything to worry about. We're gonna get back on the network. Mr. Robot's like, oh, you think it's that very easy? He goes, yeah. So let's go. And he, Mr. Robot's like, you know, what's that in your hand? She goes, well, this is just in case Elliot comes back. And I guess she has some knockout juice or something. And Mr. Robot, he basically tells her, um, once they complete their mission and bring the back door back, um, that he doesn't trust Angela, that he doesn't like the fact that she's manipulating and using Elliot. Um, they have to trust each other if they want to be able to continue forward. And, you know, why you're here. And Angela's like, I help push him forward just like you. He goes, yes, that's what I, I do, but if I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, you need to tell me which, you know, why you're here. And 
I know I'm skipping around um, here, but Angela's like, you know, I never thought I could get the revenge against E Corp. You know, she tried to do it legally. She tried to do it within. And then she found out about Elliot's plan. And she goes, I'm just helping him complete what he needs to do. And, you know, also get her vengeance at the same time. Do justice for her mother. That's why she's here. That's her motivation. At the same time, she kind of talked about this with Elliot and realized that Elliot didn't understand. It was like, what if things could be undone? Like, Elliot's plan is to undo the 5-9 hack. And she, he goes, yeah, well, what do you mean? And he goes, like, everything. The 5-9 hack, her parents, all that. What if that all can be done? And Elliot's looking at her like she's crazy. And she realizes that he's unaware of White Rose's stuff. But also doesn't believe. And I guess her belief is that maybe whatever White Rose is selling about, I don't know, undoing time, parallel universes, time machines, I don't know. That if she helps Elliot along, she not only gets her vengeance, but maybe also gets her mother back. I'm not sure what White Rose is, White Rose is selling, but Angela's full on buying, and she has gone up, um, like I said, with my uh, live reaction, as the number one villain. She knows that Elliot is broken. She knows that Elliot is split. She knows that she's manipulating him. Um, in his Elliot form and his Mr. Robot form for her end game of vengeance against E Corp. Um, she's aware of all these things and it's, it's being done. Um, so, Angela and Mr. Robot, prior to this end conversation, and the power does come back on, um, that's how the episode ends. Um, you know, they meet up in the, in the I guess, in, in second location, secondary location, separate from where they've been. You know, Elliot, when he was um, leaving Angela and going to his apartment, he tried to go back to the location that Tyra, the last location he knew where Tyra Wellick was, and realized they had cleaned everything up. You know, there was blood indicating that he had been shot, uh, so everything wasn't a, an illusion, if you will. Um, it wasn't all in his head. It actually really did happen. Um, but there's another location and Tyra Wellick's there and he's trying to apologize to Elliot but Elliot um, but he's not apologizing to Elliot he's apologizing to Mr. Robot and Mr. Robot's like you know you did what I told you to do and that's great thanks and let's get to work and he's able to basically undo what Elliot's done um, Irvin who's talking to Angela is like you know what he's back on and she goes he realized he just got shot he was a little disoriented um but he's come around and he goes I don't trust this I don't like this there's something screwy about the both of you basically um, and she goes I was brought in to handle him I'm handling him we need work to do and she also thanked him thanked Irvin for allowing the time before he uh, told White Rose and he goes you know how she feels about time and punctuality and she goes we'll get back on track um, Irvin's not liking the situation. He knows something's very screwy. He doesn't like the Swede, as he calls Tyrell Wellick, Angela, or Elliot to the get go. See, he's going to be Xer, eyeballing on all three of them, if you will. Angela, um, of course, and Elliot, of course, are Mr. Robot. You know, they're, they're back in the space. You know, like I stated, Mr. Robot gets things back together. Irvin does note that. Elliot acted like he'd never met Irvin before, which means that Mr. Robot has been in contact with Irvin. So it'll be interesting if they show a flashback of that, or we have an understanding of what that kind of relationship is. Um, this pretty much sums up the entire episode. Um, we're basically left with Darlene off wherever she is, whether it's back into FBI custody or being handled by the FBI. Angela is now Elliot's handler. She's going to get him the job at E Corp. He still thinks that uh, he's shutting down stage two. Uh, it was just something that she uh, tells Mr. Robot because he fears that Elliot's going to screw up their plans. He always does. He's going to stop everything they're doing. And Angela assures Mr. Robot that by re redirecting his focus, that's not going to happen. And that's her job. She's also there to make sure Mr. Robot stays on task. We have a new character, Irvin, that seems to be maybe in charge of stage two, if you will, making sure things go flawless. He seems to be the fixer of White Rose. 
White Rose is in control of the Washington Township plant. Uh, Ecoin is out and about. We saw that um, in the background of many businesses and places. We also saw that on the car uh, that Irvin was driving that was for sale. It was like cash was 5500 Ecoin was like 5000 So there's a price differential. Ecoin is more valuable than um, cash. Let's see. Uh, we still have no idea what happened to Trenton Moby and Leon. They weren't there. We haven't seen Dom. Um, Phil Price, where what his status is at. Or even where Terry, Terry Colby, where, where he's at. Um, let's see. That's pretty much it. Um, my only thoughts about... Well, I'll say this. What I appreciate about this episode is that the consequences have dividends. Uh, they're really showing that. They're showing the decay of New York. They're showing a, bit, a little bit of the chaos in the background. That um, a lot of the actions that F Society has taken was not in the best direction for everyone. Not even for the direction of the people that wanted E Corp to go down, Evil Corp to go down. A lot of people died. There's consequences to this. This revolution is not going to be bloodless. It's not going to be there's some freeding saving thing. That was all an illusion or delusion, if you will. Um, what else? I like the fact that this this season or the tenor in this particular episode was very horror esque. Uh, when An uh, not Angela, when Darlene was having her panic attack at the hackerspace, and that music in the background that's done by Matt Quayle. I thought at any point in time there was going to be a slasher guy coming out and stabbing people. Uh, maybe in an F Society mask. Um, it seemed very horror-esque. Like you, they, everyone's pretty much been dropped into like a post-apocalyptic world, if you will, um, these six days after Elliot's been shot. Um, have no idea what the Washington Township plan is. If this time parallel universe stuff is a bunch of buckets, I still think there's a MacGuffin. It may not be the Washington Township plant, but I don't think Sam is well with the way he drops hints and odes throughout the show, and they all have a function or a purpose that he didn't bring up. Um, Pulp Fiction, if there wasn't a MacGuffin in the series. Um, may not be the Washington Township plan. It might be the whole, you know, taking down E Corp type of a deal. Not really sure what it is, but I do think there's a MacGuffin in the show. I just honestly do. It could be, it could still be the Washington Township plan. Um, I, 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 they showed it very detailly. Um, the, the structure of the plan looks like it's actually something that does exist or theorized in the world. It looks, I, oh, what is it? Uh, someone said it might be like a collider of some sort. Um, again, I have to look further into it. There's a bunch of theories bouncing around. But, yeah, that just kind of very disappointed. Went up in flames. Um, what else did I think about the episode? I, I do think what Sam Anselmo was saying about Revolution to Repression is very true. That's what happened in Egypt, Tunisia. A lot of these places that overthrew the previous government and end up bringing in a kind of somewhat worse power than was previous. Um, the oppression, the revolution got co-opted, if you will, especially in Egypt where it's run by the Muslim Brotherhood um, and a different set of power structures, but still the power structure is in place. Uh, um, oh, overall, about talking about giving in her weakness, seeking security and safety over freedom. That was another conversation was our point that was brought up by Elliot when he was talking about um, what he has done with the 5-9 hack. But I think that's pretty much it. Overall, I really enjoyed this um, episode. I was very satisfied by it. I was very intrigued. I want to see more. Um, I think the, the tone or the tenor of this episode, if you will, the conventional, if it's just the surface layer, is very horror-esque, very um, post-apocalyptic, post if you will. The decay is going to be, the dy dy dystopia, if you will, is going to be very much 
um, in the forefront or in the surface of the show. Um, it'd be interesting what, how far they go with that, um, what direction they go with that. Um, you know, Sam and Smell does like to subvert some of these things, so it might not go in the direction we think at all. I do want to know for sure, positively, if um, Darlene is working for the FBI and why. Is it because Elliot left her out? Is it because of Tara Wellick? Um, does she think by helping the FBI she's helping Elliot? I am, I need a little bit more. I like the Angela metamorphosis into a full-on villain, if you will. I like to see how far she's going to go to make sure Elliot stays on track. I think it's going to go some very dark, dark paths. And I'm not even sure if I want to know what it what really was that um, White Rose said or did to convince Angela. You know, what she sold Angela, the belief she needed from Angela. Um, I think it's more intriguing that we don't know what that is. But that's it. Um... Thank you all for listening and um, participating in this chat. Um, I'll be logging off for now, and I will uh, see you here in the RC chat next time for the, the next episode of Mr. Robot. Until then, bye for now. Bye for now, friends. <laughs>